Worth is based on the true story of how a Washington-based lawyer, Kenneth Feinberged, battled cynicism, bureaucracy, and politics to help the victims and families of those affected by 9 11 With barely enough time to get the requisite 80 percent of the victims on board, the government representative realizes that he must change his tactics. But does he succeed? I will. And do the victims' families accept what the fund offers? Let's dig into the dramatic ending of Worth. Spoilers ahead. My daughter's life is worth just as much as anybody in a corner office. Do the victims and their families accept the fund? Faced with the overwhelming pressure to collect the requisite 80 percent of victim signatories for the fund to work and stave off economic disaster, and with only months left until the deadline for families to sign up, Ken finally holds a meeting with Charles, who has rallied significant support in his motions against the fund. Home after drinking with the boys and how to say, how'd that three alarm go? Charles merely tells Ken that something needs to change, and the latter finally realizes that he will have to look at the victims' cases individually instead of seeing them all as numbers. I asked here if she was suffering from any medical disabilities. You know, well. Rallying his team, Ken begins to study and reach out to each of the victims' families, but is only able to bring the signatories up to 36 percent, with a mere three weeks left until the deadline. I want to sue the hell out of everyone, but you're not the only ones left behind. The lawyers of wealthy victims, led by another attorney named Lee Quinn, meanwhile pressurize Ken to raise the amounts being granted to their clients. When Ken subtly points this out to Charles, the widower finally decides to support the fund and begins to spread the word that the fund has begun to take the victims' requests seriously. And kiss me goodbye. Overnight, there is a reversal of opinion, and Ken's office is flooded with signed commitments from victims' families, bringing the total to slightly above 95 percent. The film then closes with captions about how over $7 billion were disbursed under the fund and that Ken and Camille went on to work on many other landmark compensation cases. 30, maybe 40. Me too. In the end, thanks in no small part to Charles Wolfe's support, an overwhelming number of victims and their families decide to support the fund and sign up for it. Only everyone wants to have a private meeting. Why? The closing captions state that about 97 percent of them signed on to it, far exceeding the 80 percent benchmark needed for the fund to succeed. Only 94 people out of over 7,000 who were eligible decided not to sign on to the fund. As is repeatedly emphasized in the film, most of the grieving families are not concerned with the amounts being offered, but are instead angered by the cold and calculated approach taken by Ken and the government in response to their overwhelming loss. It is strange, Mr. Feinberg. Is that fair? They also see right through the strategy and realize that the fund has been established to save airline companies and not as a sympathetic gesture. Therefore, as Ken realizes near the end, they overwhelmingly want to be treated with dignity and respect which the attorney finally does by handling each case and its nuances individually instead of merely looking at them in terms of numbers. Okay, what have you got? Does Charles Wolfe commit to the fund? What happens to fixthefund.org? In the end, Charles Wolfe does sign on to the fund, though he also points out that the typos on the forms have still not been rectified. Are you in front of Fold, 1984, you had hair then. The empathetic approach employed by Ken near the end makes all the difference and convinces Charles that the attorney is on their side and that he is genuinely listening to the needs of the victims as opposed to putting on a sympathetic face for the benefit of the government. So hard until he said I Another factor that seemingly sways Charles is his deposition with Lee Quinn, the attorney leading the charge for suing the airline companies. Charles realizes that Lee's motives are much more self-serving and that his only concern is to get as much money as possible for his clients at the expense of the fund failing and many of the victims' families possibly not receiving any compensation. This system to treat us all with dignity. Compared to that, when Ken admits that he was partly driven by civic duty to do what's right and begins to look at each victim's case individually, Charles realizes that the fund should be supported. Don't be an idiot. Ken. What is Kenneth Feinberg's formula? Does he discard it in the end? Ken's formula, which is one of the first aspects of the fund he works on, helps him calculate the monetary value of the compensations that each victim's family should receive. Seemingly made using life insurance company payables and possibly other indices, the formula is widely criticized by the grieving families as a cold and discriminatory practice that puts differing values on people depending on their backgrounds. Uh, 
I know there's been an issue with. In one scene, we actually see the formula at work with Ken calculating that the family of a CFO that perished in the tragedy would be entitled to over $14 million in compensation, while the family of a janitor would get about $350,000. As Ken repeatedly tells his team and anyone who questions his methods, he has a responsibility towards taxpayers whose money the fund is essentially made of and therefore has to use a clear and objective method to calculate the payouts. He holds this principle till the end and hence doesn't discard the formula. However, he also realizes that each case needs to have a personalized approach and begins to examine the victim's circumstances individually. This involves him attempting to expedite payouts in some cases or even transferring them directly to college tuition accounts for victims' families that need the money to pay for college. These uh, facts and materials to a, a copy center, you name one of those?